Well, a blessed Holy Saturday to you, dear saints. Thanks for joining me today. As we gather today, we again look at what was going on in Jesus' world today, even though he was resting in the grave. Now, we might think there was nothing until he rose, but there was actually quite a bit of things going on on this day when Jesus rested. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, as we gather today, we, uh, we gather in the psalm. We haven't used the psalm this week, but today we gather in the psalms in Psalm 16 for a very specific reason. And this reason points to what happened in Jesus' world today. Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrow of those who run after another god shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines for me have fallen in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. That psalm, toward the end of that psalm written by David, we hear him say, For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. There's two things going on here that David is absolutely confident of through God's word and faith, is that you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. David knows very well that when he dies, he will not go to hell. That he will go to sit at the, uh, in heaven with Christ because, well, he, he doesn't know Christ yet, but his resurrection will be with God the Father. He will not be sentenced to hell. And the next thing he said truly does give us good news. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. And right there he is referring to the pre-incarnate Christ. He is referring to this day, the day that we, in Holy Week, that we know that Jesus is resting in the tomb, that there is no corruption. There is no uh, breaking down of Jesus' body. His body will not see corruption. It will not begin to fall apart as dead bodies do. Great hope for us right there in the Psalms And then when we talk about today, when we talk about the events of today, there are not, there is not much mentioned in the scriptures, but a few places we get the insight into see what's going on. And one of those places is Acts chapter 2. Men of Israel hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosening the pains of death because it is not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand and I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will make, 
you will make me full of gladness in your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn him an oath to him that he would set, excuse me, being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption, that Jesus, this Jesus God raised up, and that one we are all witnesses of, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and receiving from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he had poured out this, poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. You can hear again in Acts what's being quoted there from Psalm chapter 16. First we have the quote itself and then the, and the preacher here, Peter, reminds us of the same thing. That the Holy One will not see corruption. That there is no decomposition going on because death has no hold on him. That's the great hope for us here. That is, it did not have a hold on Jesus, so it does not have a hold on us. Now, just one more reference as we go back to this. We find out what Jesus did in this day. There is a reference to this in 1 Peter in the third chapter. Now who, is, now who is there to harm you if you're zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered, once for the sins of the righteous, for the unrighteous, that he might bring to us, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit in which he went and proclaimed to the saints in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought to safety through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God the Father. We have the second clue of what goes on on this Holy Saturday right there. We confess it in the creed that our Lord has risen from the dead and there as he is before he rises from the dead, he descends into hell. Peter says he preached to the saints, to the souls in prison who would not listen. Before the resurrection of Easter morning, Jesus descends into hell. He doesn't go down into hell to preach to them, to give them a second chance, like some denominations teach. When we die, we are judged at that time, and there is no second chance. Jesus descended into hell to proclaim to the evil one, to proclaim to Satan that he is one. The very sinless Son of God that Satan saw to it that was killed did not stay dead. Death has no mastery over him. It cannot hold him. As much as Satan tried, death did not hold him. And the living Christ stands before the evil one to say, you cannot take away or you cannot kill me with death. And because death does not affect Jesus, it will not affect us. Death will not take us away from Christ eternally. Yes, dear saints, you and I, one day, unless Christ comes before, we will breathe our last. But on that day, 
we will go to be with Christ. Our soul will go to be with him, and our body will rest in the ground, which is another act that Jesus did during this time as he was in the grave. In the third day, as G- or before the third day, as Jesus rested in the grave, he hallowed the graves of those who would be buried in faith. He made that place a wonderful place, a place of resting and waiting until Christ comes again and stands upon the earth and calls us back to be with him. So as we look at the events that happened on this holy Saturday, as Jesus is laid in the grave and his friends and family mourns, Jesus continues his work. Jesus descends into hell. And there in hell he proclaims victory over Satan, victory over death and sin and the devil. There he proclaims to Satan that he cannot take anyone out of Jesus' hand. Satan does not have the authority to steal people out of Jesus' hands. He not only descends into hell and declares his victory, he hallows the grave of those who are buried in faith And we have the same promise that Jesus had, that it will not end in corruption, that our bodies will not be made into dust or decay into dust, and that would be it, that one day the curse of death that we momentarily feel will be reversed when Jesus stands on the earth, and our bodies will be raised, perfect and incorruptible. These are the promises that come to us during this Saturday, during this time before Jesus rises from the dead. Dear Saints, tonight we gather for the Easter Vigil at 6 o'clock, a service that walks through some of the bigger stories of the Old Testament and continues to point us to the hope and the promise that is ours because of what Jesus did yesterday and because of him now resting in the grave And the promises that will be revealed tomorrow when Jesus rises from the dead just as he promised. It might be just a little early for this, but we celebrate this in the Easter Vigil, which really is kind of like Christmas Eve for Christmas. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for the gifts that you have given to us, and we pray that you would continue to watch over us. We thank you for your descent into hell. We thank you for your victory over sin, death, and the evil one. We thank you, Father, as certainly as you have risen from the dead, you make that promise to us as well. One day, Father, even though our bodies might rest in the grave, you will call us from death to life, and we will join you in the new heaven and the new earth. Thank you, Father, for your sacrifice. Thank you for forgiving our sins and strengthen us now in the hope and promise of the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, have an enjoyable Holy Saturday, and please join us tonight as we celebrate again and anticipate the resurrection with the Easter Vigil starting outside at 6 o'clock. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.